known as the seven wonders of the ancient world the astonishing works of art and architecture are testament to the ingenuity imagination and sheer hard work that humans are capable of however they are also a reminder of the human capacity to be different to destroy and perhaps to decorate once ancient writers compiled the list of the seven wonders of the world it became the subject of discussion about achievements that deserve inclusion the original list is from a work by philo of byzantium written in 225 bc contact the seven wonders of the world in the end human hands joined forces with nature to destroy all but one of the wonders furthermore it is possible that at least one of the wonders may not have existed at all nevertheless the seven continue to inspire and are celebrated as remarkable products of the ingenuity and skill of Earth's early civilizations. Number 7. The Great Pyramid of Giza, Egypt. The Great Pyramid, located in Giza on the west bank of the Nile River north of Cairo in Egypt. It is the only wonder of the ancient world that has survived to this day. It is part of a group of three pyramids Hufu, Hafra, Minkarihin, that were built between 2700 BC. and 2500 BC as royal tombs. The largest and most impressive of these is Khufu, better known as the Great Pyramid, which covers 13 acres and is believed to contain more than 2 million stone blocks that each weigh from 2 to 30 tons. For more than 4,000 years, Khufu ruled as the tallest building in the world. In fact, it took modern man until the 19th century to build a taller structure. Amazingly, almost identical Egyptian pyramids were built without the use of modern tools or surveying equipment. So, how did the Egyptians build the pyramids? Scientists believe that the Egyptians used wooden rollers and sledges to move the stones into place. The sloping walls, intended to imitate the rays of Ra, the sun god, were originally built as steps, then it was filled with limestone. The interior of the pyramids included narrow passages and hidden chambers in an unsuccessful attempt to thwart grave robbers. Although modern archaeologists have found some great treasures among the ruins, they believe that most of what the pyramids once contained was looted within 250 years of their completion. Number 6. Hanging Gardens of Babylon, Iraq. According to ancient Greek poets, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon were built near the Euphrates River in modern-day Iraq. Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar II, around 600 BC. The gardens were said to have been planted 75 feet in the air on a massive square brick terrace set on steps like a stage. The king allegedly built the towering gardens to relieve his lover Amidus' homesickness for the natural beauty of her home in Media, the northwestern part of present-day Iran. Later writers described how people could walk under the beautiful gardens, which were supported by tall stone pillars. Modern scholars have concluded that in order for the gardens to survive, they had to be irrigated using a system consisting of a pump, water wheel, and cisterns to move water from the Euphrates several feet into the air. Although there are multiple accounts of the gardens in both Greek and Roman literature, none of them are direct, and no mention of the gardens is found in Babylonian cuneiform inscriptions. As a result, most modern scholars believe that the garden's existence was part of an inspirational and widely believed but still fictional story. Number 5. Statue of Zeus in Olympia the famous statue of Zeus, king of the gods in Greek mythology, was made by the Athenian sculptor Phidias and completed and placed in the Temple of Zeus at Olympia, the site of the ancient Olympic Games, around the middle of the 5th century BC. The statue depicts the god of thunder sitting bare-chested on a wooden throne. Holding the armrests of the thrones were two sphinxes, mythical creatures with the head and chest of a woman, the body of a lion and the wings of a bird. The statue of Zeus was rich in gold and ivory dot at 40 feet tall, it was so tall that its head almost touched the top of the temple. According to legend, sculptor Phidias asked Zeus for his sign of approval after completing the statue. Soon after, the temple was struck by lightning. 
The statue of Zeus graced the temple at Olympia for more than eight centuries before Christian priests persuaded the Roman emperor to close the temple in the 4th century AD. At that time, the statue was moved to a temple in Constantinople, where it is believed to have been dot it was destroyed in a fire in 462. Number 4. Dot temple of Artemis in Ephesus. There was indeed more than one temple to Artemis, a series of several altars and temples were destroyed and then restored at the same site in Ephesus, a Greek port city on the western coast of modern Turkey. Among the most impressive of these structures were two marble temples built around 550 BC. and 350 BC, respectively. The writer Antipater of Sidon wrote of the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, apart from Olympus, the sun has never looked upon anything so majestic. The original Temple of Artemis was designed by the Cretan architect Chersophron and his son Metagenes and decorated by some of the most famous artists of the ancient world. The building burned down on July 21, 356 BC, according to legend on the same night that Alexander the Great was born. It was burned by a Greek citizen named Herostratus, who claimed to have burned the marvel so that his name would be known in history. He was executed and the government declared it illegal to pronounce his name. About six years later, construction of a new temple of Artemis began. The new building was surrounded by marble steps that led to a 400 foot terrace. In Sai are 127 60 foot tall marble columns and a statue of Artemis, the Greek goddess of the hunt. Archaeologists disagree about whether the building had an open-air roof or was topped with wooden tiles. The temple was largely destroyed by the Ostrogoths in AD 262, and it wasn't until the 1860s that archaeologists excavated the first ruins of the temple's columns at the bottom of the Kostra River. Number 3. Mausoleum in Halicarnassus Located in what is now southeastern Turkey, the Halicarnassus Mausoleum was a tomb built by Artemisia for her husband, Mausolus, king of Carnia in Asia Minor, after his death in 353 BC. Mausolus was also Artemisia's brother, and according to legend, she was so saddened by his death that she mixed his ashes with water and drank it in addition to ordering the building of the shrine. The massive mausoleum was built entirely of white marble and is believed to have been around 135 feet in height. The complex design of the building, consisting of three rectangular tiers, may have been an attempt to reconcile Lycian, Greek and Egyptian architectural styles. The first tier was a 60-foot base, followed by a middle tier of 36 ionic columns and a stepped roof in the shape of a pyramid. At the top of the roof, the tomb was decorated with the work of four sculptors, and a 20-foot marble display of a four-horse chariot. The mausoleum was largely destroyed in an earthquake in the 13th century and its remains were later used to fortify the castle. In 1846, pieces of one of the friezes of the mausoleum were excavated from the castle and are now found, along with other relics from the Halicarnassus site, in the British Museum, London. Number 2. Colossus of Rhodes. The Colossus of Rhodes was an enormous bronze statue of the sun god Helios built by the Rhodians over a period of 12 years in the 3rd century BC. The city was the target of a Macedonian siege in the early 4th century BC. And according to legend, the Rhodians sold the tools and equipment left over from the Macedonians to pay for the Colossus. Designed by the sculptor Charisse, the statue, had 100 feet, was the tallest in the ancient world. It was completed around 280 BC. It remained 60 years until it collapsed in an earthquake. It has not been rebuilt. Hundreds of years later, the Arabs conquered Rhodes and sold the remains of the statue as scrap metal. Because of this, archaeologists don't know much about the exact location of the statue or what it looked like. Most believe it depicts the sun god standing naked holding a torch in one hand and holding a spear in the other. It was once believed that the statue stood with one leg on each side of the harbor, but most scholars now agree that the statue's legs were likely built close together to support its enormous weight. Number 
Number 1. Lighthouse of Alexandria. The Lighthouse of Alexandria was located on a small island called Pharos near the city of Alexandria. It was designed by the Greek architect Sostratus and completed around 270 BC. During the reign of Ptolemy II, the lighthouse helped guide Nile River ships in and out of the city's busy port. Archaeologists have discovered ancient coins on which the lighthouse was painted. From them they deduced that the structure consisted of three layers, a square level at the bottom, an octagonal level in the middle and a cylindrical top. Above that stood a 16-foot statue, most likely of Ptolemy II or Alexander the Great, after whom the city was named. Although estimates of the lighthouse's height range from 200 to 600 feet, most modern scholars believe it was approximately 380 feet tall. The lighthouse was gradually destroyed during a series of earthquakes from 956 to 1323. Since then some of its remains have been discovered at the bottom of the Nile. In short, I hope you use this list to help you figure out where to go next, and to realize that all of these places have value in their own right, a culture worth learning about and appreciating. I remind you to subscribe to the Fence channel to know the best natural and tourist places around the world.